28-year-old Ruth Goodyjohn lives in the small town of Shelby, deep in the heart of rural Nebraska. She has four beautiful daughters, six-year-old Courtney, five-year-old Sarah, two-year-old Emily, and a new baby, Wendy. It was pretty crazy being a mom of four. They got me laughing, they had me crying with joy. Just being their mom was the greatest adventure. Courtney is the eldest daughter in the family. It's fun having three younger sisters. I like being the oldest. It's a lot of work, you know, um, having to keep everybody in line. But there is one thing the whole family loves to do together. The girls loved being outdoors. We took them fishing quite often. We spent time, you know, days camping. And two-year-old Emily has her own particular approach to fishing. Emily liked to goof around a lot. Emily would pick up rocks and start throwing them. And either I or my mom would be like, stop, you're going to scare the fish away. She thought it was funny. But the family is about to discover that nature isn't always so harmless. One morning in early June, Ruth is getting the girls ready for the day. I woke Emily up to get her dressed so I could get her sisters off to school. And I noticed about a quarter size lump on her neck. I didn't know what it was. I thought that was strange. I had never experienced that with the older two sisters. I was concerned, but I figured I would give her Tylenol every four hours to see if that would take it away. But the next day, Ruth finds that strange lump is still there. I went into her pediatrician and they did an examination and they took one look at her neck and they explained to me it was an infection that caused a lymph node to swell. Lymph nodes are part of the body's immune system. When the body detects an infectious agent, it sends lymphatic fluid to the lymph nodes, making them swell. Doctors give Emily antibiotics. I immediately start administering it to her. The next morning, the lump grew within less than 24 hours. It just overpowered her neck. It just was huge. I immediately called the doctor's office back, but they just told me to continue to administer the medicine that she'll get better. I was a little angry because I thought, you know, they should have at least investigated it a little bit more. Nevertheless, Ruth continues the antibiotic treatment. The next day, I saw black rings under her eyes. It looked like she got hit under both eyes. She was very, very frustrated because she couldn't express in more logic terms of how she was feeling. All she could do was just cry. I was scared. I honestly thought these doctors must be crazy because this child is not getting better. So I ended up taking her to the emergency room. There, an ER doctor reviews Emily's case. The doctor took one look at her. The option was to let the doctor give her a pure penicillin shot. Penicillin is an antibiotic used to treat a wide range of serious infections. The doctor administered the shot. My biggest hope was that it was going to work and that things were going to start improving. For the next two weeks, Ruth keeps Emily indoors, and her health seems to improve. It was a weekend. We were going to go have a family day outside. and. I started combing her hair, and she let out this awful scream. So I start filling her head, and I feel this bump in the back part of her head. And when I started separating her hair, I found a bloated tick. Ticks are small insect-like parasites that feed on the blood of their host. I was freaking out. This tick literally dug its body and its feet right into her scalp. 
Immediately, Ruth uses tweezers to extract the embedded tick out of Emily's head. I ended up saving the tick and put it in a bottle. Ruth takes Emily and the specimen back to their local pediatrician. The doctor came in and she explained to me that the tick that we had taken off of Emily was an American dog tick. The American dog tick is primarily found east of the Rocky Mountains. It can carry several infectious agents that can cause multiple diseases, including Rocky Mountain spotted fever and canine tick paralysis, all of which affect humans and are potentially fatal. To test for tick-borne illnesses, the pediatrician sends Ruth and Emily to Children's Hospital and Medical Center, 78 miles away in Omaha. There, pediatric disease specialist Dr. Archana Chatterjee reviews her case. At her initial presentation, Emily's case was not immediately clear. She had an ulcer on her head at the site where there is an insect bite. They drew her blood, just numerous blood draws for different things. She expressed a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Um, there was moments where she could express herself, but there was just moments that she just cried. And it's like my heart just ached. For three long weeks, Emily and Ruth are in and out of the hospital while doctors analyze the blood tests. I really didn't have any answers, and I wanted them. So Ruth returns with Emily to the hospital. We were scheduled for one more appointment, the follow-up of a previous test. The doctor comes walking in and decked out in what looked like almost like a radioactive suit. I have this look of shock on my face because, of course, I don't understand what was going on. She tells me that Emily's very contagious. Emily had tested positive for tularemia. Tularemia is an infectious tick-borne disease caused by a bacteria called Francisella tularensis. Inside Emily's body, the bacteria colonize her skin and kill her tissue. White blood cells attempt to destroy the bacteria by ingesting them, but the bacteria are able to survive inside the white blood cells, where they continue to reproduce. The immune system tries to flush out the bacteria with fluids. This is what caused Emily's swollen lymph nodes. The bacteria that causes tularemia infections is highly contagious, is resistant to penicillin, and can be fatal. Because Emily had large open sore, those bacteria could be aerosolized from that ulcer site. So she was placed in isolation. And because Emily went undiagnosed and therefore untreated for several weeks, the worst outcome, obviously, is death. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if I was going to lose her. I didn't know if she was going to get better. I was just, in all honesty, I was trusting that God was going to take care of her. I just, I, my heart was breaking. 